Here we are in the 2013 Turner Prize in Derry, London Derry. Is there an echo in the room? And I find myself in a life drawing class, or rather a not quite alive life drawing class, in this figure by David Shrigley, which is so ill-proportioned that anything I do, pretty much, is going to look all right. Whoa, he's having a wee. If you're faced with a really misproportioned figure to draw from, your drawing's going to be out of whack too. Shrigley's asking us questions about what good and bad drawing is. I have to say, I much prefer his drawings to his sculptures, but what he's doing here is inviting us all to uh, do a Shrigley, which is great fun. And the more you look, the more you see. That navel is really rather beautifully proportioned. The rest of him, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Law Provost's work is silly, sensual, funny, and an extremely engaging. Uh, most of her Turner Prize show is a very dark installation filled with homemade teapots, some of which look like bottoms, uh, a film, and all sorts of strange objects which are apparently the remains of her grandfather's artworks. Provost's grandfather was a conceptual artist who dug a tunnel out of the building where he lived and has never been seen since. All this, of course, is made up and a lie, or as artists and writers call it, a fiction. But you're never quite sure where you are with her work. At times it reminds me a bit too much of the Swiss artist Pippi Lotti Wrist. Um, there's something beautifully feminine about both their works, and their work is a play on a kind of feminine aesthetic. The room we're in now, this pink room, uh, we're watching a video, apparently, of Law's grandmother's dream, in which she fries eggs on top of a computer, goes to discos, and rides a motorbike. But the whole thing kind of sucks you down the rabbit hole into another world, which is sensual and silly and warm and very, very engaging. Lynette Iodomboachi is the only painter in this year's Turner Plies and all her work is shown in a semi-darkened room and you have to get up really close to be able to discern the images which are all of black subjects. A man taking off his socks while another man leans down towards his feet, someone with a gun, someone wearing a ruff, someone turning to look back at us. There's a way in which this theatrical lighting accentuates the fact that the black subject in painting is often invisible. Uh, it's very strange how the whites of their eyes ping back at you along with their underwear and their teeth. Although I like Iodomboachi's work very much, uh, there is a way in which this theatrical light lighting uh, somehow distracts one from really looking at the paintings and how good they are, which I think remains the big question. The British-born, Berlin-based artist Tino Segal doesn't allow any of his work to be photographed or filmed, which is why we're standing outside. What are his works? Are they installations, confrontations, performances? You go into an empty white room that's brightly lit and someone comes up to you and asks whether you'd like to talk about exchange value and money. And if you agree, he promises to give you a couple of quid when the conversation's finished. This is an early work by Seagal from 2003, repeated here in the Turner Prize exhibition. And I had a nice little chat about Marxism, the state of the money market, and property prices, and whether we're about to enter a kind of Weimar Republic, carrying all our cash around in wheelbarrows that isn't worth anything. Seagull's work is always a confrontation, an invitation, a performance, and in some ways a journey into unknown territory. I think he deserves to win the Turner Prize. He's the real world-class artist here, not least because 
how innovative his work is, how surprising it is, and how he always takes you on a journey into an unknown territory.